Hi, I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Today, friends, I have a project update video for you. Um, if we haven't met before, I'm Hannah. I'm a mom and a knitter, and I live in North Carolina I'm with my husband and our son. And I share my knitting projects here and on Instagram. And I have a newsletter that's mostly just for test calls, but occasionally I send out what I'm up to. Um, and all those links are in the description box. So project update video means I'm sharing finished objects, works in progress, and acquisitions that I have. Um, I just have a few of the first two and I have a ton of acquisitions to share with you today. Um, as usual, the timestamps are below so you can skip to whatever you'd like to watch or you can watch the whole thing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so you can um, see my videos when they come out. Usually I put out a video every Friday night, but today this is coming on Sunday night just because life has been a little bit crazy lately and that's just where we're at. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I have my finished object, which is my stick season sweater. If you watched my everything I knit in 2023, I did include this in that roundup because I finished it in 2023. So I did the blocking um, and weaving in the ends and all that on January 1st, but um, I still included it in my roundup because I, I was pretty sure I could knit both of the sleeves in just a few days. Um, we were going to be at the beach, and so I thought, okay, I can do this. Um, and I did, and it's wonderful. I love it. I don't know. I didn't take any finished object pictures yet. Um, I don't know if I have any of me wearing it. I've worn it a few times out and about. I don't usually give like an in-depth review of patterns um, because I just don't feel like I'm super qualified for that. But I am gonna do a little bit of a recap on how I felt about this one. So I decided to experiment with this pattern and just knit it completely to pattern as they say. <laughs> so that means I was not going to make any modifications. I was knitting it with the recommended ease in my recommended size based on my bust and I was going to knit it two length, all those things. So usually I like do quite a few modifications just so that I, I feel more confident in the fit. I don't know that that's actually been beneficial to the fit for me. <laughs> um, I mean, I like how my sweaters fit, but like sometimes I'm like, ah, I probably should have just done what the pattern designer said. So this one, I was going to try that and see, um, how it went and I am really happy with it. I will say I'm used to significantly more positive ease. Um, this was only two inches and so yeah I felt like I mean I, I think the recommended ease was more but based on like the size range that was available the only one that was going to fall within the range was going to be that two inches for me so I went for that and I so if I knit it again I would size up I think. It's not honestly I feel like it fits me the same way it fits the designer in her pictures but I might rather a more relaxed fit, I guess. Um, but the sleeves are perfect length, actually. <laughs> I'm really happy with them. I usually go for this bracelet length. Um, that's just my preferred length, but I knit them to pattern and they're so comfortable. I'm like, wow, okay. I need to make all my sleeves like long now. Like I need to go back and add <laughs> like two inches here. Cause I actually really, I was really happy with how that turned out. Um, okay, let's see what else. The only thing, so I knit it to the length, um, like here, that it said, and then I started the ribbing. But it turned out almost, it was like an inch and a half shorter than the schematic. I was really confused because I thought, okay, I'm knitting this exactly to pattern. I didn't shorten it at all. Um, I don't know why it's so short or so short compared to the schematic. I checked my gauge, it was good. So I, I even went up a needle size to make sure I got the right gauge. <laughs> I figured out something that I think might have been part of the issue is the yoke is supposed to be a certain depth like I don't remember how much it was say it's supposed to be like 10 inches or whatever I don't remember I don't think it's supposed to be 10 inches but it says it's supposed to be 10 inches here for this underarm and I think what happened was the sleeves are quite um, they're not tight but they're like fitted and so you pick up at a rate of either one to two or two to three and so I think that significantly shortened my armhole depth here because I picked up so few stitches so the way that the arm stitches are pulling in the armhole depth I think that's what shortened the yoke depth for me in the long term it's like it it's like a little over an inch maybe an inch and a half um, so I think that's what made it shorter. I have a feeling it will like lengthen with time because um, this is a wool alpaca blend. So I think the alpaca will like 
soften it up some and that doesn't actually bother me there's still like more than enough room for me I don't like my underarms to be super tight like I don't like that but there's still enough room where I feel comfortable in it so I am really happy with it but I was kind of bummed that it ended up being shorter <laughs> however it's still a good length on me it's not like overly cropped or anything um but yeah I was like oh man I tried really hard to make this to pattern and <laughs> it didn't quite quite work out so it could have also been like user error I I don't know maybe I just didn't knit as many rows or something um I don't know but that's just my sneaking suspicion that when I picked up the stitches I also have a really tight I knit these on magic loop and so I had a really tight gauge for the sleeve and so I have had some feedback people have shared comments that they often knit a half size or a size up for their sleeves so that they don't have that issue so I think I could have done that as well I didn't realize it was gonna be a problem um until I felt like the yoke shrunk <laughs> after I added the sleeves. Um, anyway, I I think I would love to make this again. I feel like it's a very classic sweater that I could wear anytime. Like I could make a few more of this and I could wear it just like out to eat or I could wear it, I could dress it nice for a date night or I could just wear it like to the park with my son. That is what I was going for all the time. <laughs> what I'm going for is like stay at home mom look, but also could be nicer if I wanted it to, but park friendly. So this is very park friendly and I'm really happy with it. Um, I have seen a few knitters that made this. I think, uh, no, I don't remember. They put some elastic in the neckband. I don't even know where to start with that. So if you have a recommendation for what neckband elastic um, one should use, let me know. I haven't noticed an issue with it, but since everyone does it, I was like, I, I would like to try it and see. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with this. I love the little side sort of seam look. I love the stitch pattern. It was just enough interest and also mixed with the stockinette where I felt like, and it was DK weight, honestly, is a perfect project to me <laughs> because it has a little bit of texture, also still a lot of stockinette. It has like this two by two rib. It's DK, so it doesn't knit up like super quickly, but it's not super slow. So I knit this in about a month, which is pretty good for me in terms of speed, um, but, that to say we were at the beach for a little bit and so that's always a little more relaxing um more time to knit okay anyway that's my only finished object um i do have some work in progress for you so my first one is a sock i talked about making dk weight socks in my pattern video and then also in another video i was making some for a friend and um now for the make it again knit along this is my entry for that i'm making them again but for myself <laughs> So these are the Summerly Knits um, Thanksgiving socks and um, all I have to do is graph the toe and I've been putting it off because that's just <laughs> just how I'm doing things lately I guess. Um, but I'm using Seniscarn Perfect Superwash in this purple and um, I don't think there's a color name on here. So I'm using the leftovers from my friend's socks that I bought and making myself a pair. So. Um, if you haven't heard of the knit along, that is by Stephanie of Edible Thoughts Makes. It's a lovely knit along where you make something again, and it's either because you love it so much or you want a better fit or any reason that you might make something again. So this is what I'm making again for myself. DK weight socks, I'm loving making them and knit up super quickly, um, just a day or two. So I'm happy, happy for that. Hopefully going to make the other one soon enough, um, but I've been really focused on a different project. So my first garment of the year, I decided to do a test knit. Um, last year, I only did one or two test knits because I just didn't want to feel stressed by the timeline. And I also wanted to make sure I could provide the designers with, you know, feedback and, and all of that. And so I did not do any. I think I did one or two near the end of the year. Um, but honestly, yeah, I know I did one. I'm trying to remember if I did two. Anyway, this is the, or going to be, the Calm Down Sweater by Lily Kate France of Lily Kate Makes. It's all in the same cord right now, so it's quite, quite jumbled up, as my son would say. He always says jumbled up. I don't know um, where he got that from, but he's like, it's all jumbled up. Like if his, you know, his toys are all mixed together or something. It's very cute. Um, so it is all jumbled up, but um, I finished the back panel and then these this front panel is done and now I'm working on this right panel and then I will connect them 
work them a little bit more and then connect the front and the back. So it has this nice saddle shoulder detail. Um, I will say I've never done a saddle shoulder like this. I did a design for a saddle shoulder, the Passport Pullover for kids, and um, it's honestly more like a modified raglan because it's all done in one piece versus this saddle shoulder that's like, you do this piece and you pick up, then you pick up on the other side, that kind of thing, which I think is more of a traditional saddle shoulder and it adds more structure, so I do like that. Um, but this is basically a pullover version of her Calm Down Cardigan. I love the Calm Down Cardigan and I would love to make it at some point, but I'm making the sweater version. Um, I had a feeling I would make this anyway, <laughs> and so that is why I wanted to make it as a test knit. That's kind of my, my go-to now is, oh, I dropped a stitch, sorry. My go-to now is, would I make this anyway? And yes, I had planned to make this. Calm Down Cardigan had been on my list for a while, but I had the recommended yarn for the test knit. So that was like huge to me because I didn't know what I was gonna make with this yarn. And so when I saw that it was the recommended yarn for this test knit, I was like, my problems are solved. This will not languish in my yarn pantry forever because now I have the recommended yarn for this pattern. I just feel like that's a big win for me when I see something like that come up because I often have trouble matching the yarn I already have with a pattern I want to make. So this is De Rurum Natura Ulissi. I got this yarn in Paris at Lil Weasel. And it's two shops across like the hallway from each other. And one side has like a lot of yarn like this and it's organized by color. And my phone had died when we went so I didn't get any good pictures, but they're on the internet. <laughs> um, and it's a lot of like commercial yarns, but like every price range you could think of. And then the other side is mostly hand dyed yarns. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, if I'm being honest, if I'm being totally honest, it's a lot darker, I think, because the sun is kind of going down here, but if I'm being totally honest, um, I thought that this was like a little bit lighter, maybe more closer to this kind of shade or even like this, and this is definitely like almost, like I might say magenta if I described it. It's like almost rose, but like more raspberry colored, and so I think it was evening um, there, so it was dark and I couldn't really see that well inside the store. And I was like, this looks nice, <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> and I didn't have my phone to like check online for a pattern. And so I just like kind of panic bought it. And um, here we are, but I'm telling myself, I do like it. I wear pink, it's quite bright for me, but I do think I'll wear it because it's like a statement and I can just wear it with jeans or black pants or whatever. And I think it will be really nice, but I am hoping to finish it by Valentine's Day. That was my thinking. It could be a Valentine's sweater. In the past, like as a kid in high school, college, I loved Valentine's Day. I loved getting all my friends gifts. I loved dressing up for it, like all pink, all hearts, all of that, that kind of thing. Um, because I just really like that, like love and um, I don't know, letting people know that you love them. So I have done that in the past, but as I've gotten older, I've just been like, so much going on in life and life is like not all hearts and red and pink and all that anymore and so I kind of stopped doing that but I think I'd like to do that again and so it was actually my sister's idea she was like why don't you just finish it for Valentine's Day because I was a little unsure of what to do with this color it's so bright I think in the yeah it's not it's coming across quite nicely but I think it is a little bit brighter than it than it is but anyway I think it will be lovely um the test deadline is not until maybe mid or the end of March. She has a lovely timeline, um, long enough to finish a sweater. <laughs> um, I think it was like eight or nine or 10 weeks even, um, but I'm hoping to finish it early so that I can have it for Valentine's Day. And if not, it'll be okay. I have another pink sweater I can wear. <laughs> um, this is my canvas sweater, by the way, by Ted Besh Knitwear, and I knit it in Vovo. Um, I believe I made this, well, it wasn't in my roundup. So I guess I made it in 2022. Was it my roundup? I think it was in my roundup. I think it was in my roundup. I think I made this last year. I don't remember. Anyway, I'm really happy with it and I love wearing it. Okay, let's talk acquisitions because I have quite a few today. My first acquisitions, oh gosh, what do I start with? I have some, I'll start with yarn. So recently I went to a yarn shop, new to me, but probably not new to 
to some of you friends. It was called the Salty Sheep Yarn Shop in Swansboro, North Carolina. Um, I made a reel about it. I went with my mom. They had an end of year sale. And so I went, I think we went on New Year's Eve. It was pretty fun um, to go spend time with my mom and just and do that. And everyone there was so kind. I enjoyed going, highly recommend it if you're in the area. It's in an area in North Carolina called the Crystal Coast. So if you've heard of Emerald Isle, Beaufort, Moorhead City, Swansboro, places like that. And those are all within like an hour's drive. And so yes, we went to Swansboro and got some yarn. This is what I got. First, um, I got this for Ollie. They have a lovely selection of yarn. Um, it felt like I saw a lot of yarns that I have not seen sort of in my yarn circle in Raleigh. Like they had Farmer's Daughter Fibers, they had Spin Cycle. They had a large selection of luxury yarns, similar to if you've been to Black Mountain Yarn Shop, it felt like that. Um, but they had this Jameson's and I got it for my son, Ollie, because his favorite color is blue. And he always asked me to get him something at the yarn shop. So I thought, might as well start him a little collection of blue Jameson's and maybe I'll get a different color each time I go somewhere. Um, but usually I get him like a little um, cotton, small cotton one or something or a mini. But I thought, wow, since they have Jameson's, I've never bought it, I might as well get it. And then I got these. This is Malabrigo Rios. I do, we do have this in yarn shops near us, but um, I got the color Ivory and the color Dulce de Leche. I have used the same color before. <laughs> um, anyway, I am planning to make a, um, we have a, my cousin is having a baby. And um, so I'm making a horse for the baby. I'm planning to use um, the Nilla the Unicorn pattern that I made previously for my other cousin's baby, um, and then just make it into a horse. So, um, fun fact about me, <laughs> my mom and her family, um, are very, like, grew up riding horses, showing horses. Um, my sister rode and showed horses. I did not, um, carry that on. <laughs> I don't dislike horses, but it just wasn't ever my thing. So that is still really important to my mom's family. And, um, they have horses still, they love all the horse things. And so I am hoping this will look like one of the horses that um, my cousin's wife has that she posts a lot on her Instagram. Um, and so basically I just went on her Instagram and I was like that horse. Okay. <laughs> and I picked two colors that looked like him or her. So again, I'm not, um, I don't know anything about horses, but um, hopefully this will be a cute one. And I am excited to make it. I love making like the little tedious ones, but honestly, I think my heart is with like the more simple ones because they are just so joyful to make as well and joyful to give. And also they, um, yeah, they just come together much more quickly. So I get excited about them. I'm like, oh my goodness, she's almost done. Um, okay, so I have those things. And then, oh, um, at Christmas, my sister got me this book, the Knitting Pattern Writing Handbook. So this is by Tech Tip Talk. If you haven't um, like looked at their content, follow them, any of that, you definitely should. Even if you're not interested in becoming a designer, um, their stuff is just amazing to, to look at. So I am so thrilled by this book and I can't wait. I'm hoping it will help me streamline my designing process. Um, but yeah, thank you, Abby. <laughs> and then also I got from my mom. Ta-da! So this is the Lumos Knitting Light. Um, my mom got it for me for Christmas. It is amazing. It, it, like I know every knitting influencer has one and everyone's talking about them and it's like, do I really need that? But they have so many good codes and deals that yes, I would definitely recommend this. It feels so sturdy. Um, yeah, I guess I was a little skeptical, like, do I really need this one? But I really, really like this one. It has three settings for light, so you can choose whichever one you like best. And I've definitely used it in the car, in bed, just in my little knitting corner because we turn the light off to watch TV and then I can't knit, so this is perfect. I, thanks, Mom. I really, really love it. Um, okay, then the last thing I'm breaking up into this video and then probably next video um, because there's so much. But I recently said how, you know, I had um, done a yarn swap and my yarn never came and um, for whatever reason and um, so a dear knitting friend reached out and said can I send you some yarn because that made my heart sad and I want to send you some yarn and she sent me so much yarn it was so kind um, 
I'll ask her if it's okay to name her. She sent me a, such a thoughtful package of yarn. Um, yeah, it's just, it was just so sweet, but I wanted to share half of it today and half of it for next time in case I don't have any acquisitions next week. Um, but this, this is Juniper Moon Farm Patagonia Organic Merino. And I actually don't know what weight it is. I'm feeling like maybe it's a sport weight um, because it's 382 yards for 100 grams. Um, I love this color. It's acorn. Oh my gosh, I love acorns so much. So like could not be more perfect. Um, sport weight is my favorite. So, or DK, but sport DK is my favorite. So it's kind of perfect um, for me. And then she sent this as well, which is Queensland Cat Katmandu. Um, wool, silk, and cashmere, which is so, so nice. Um, and the color is oyster shell, um, which is quite lovely. It's almost like a purple. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I'm going to make, but it was just such a thoughtful gift and it warmed my heart. Yeah, knitters are the best. Every time I'm like, oh, that was a little bit sad. Knitters are like, no, knitters are the best. <laughs> we really are. Um, so anyway, that just made me smile and it was so kind of her to send me send me such a thoughtful gift. Um, and I really love this yarn. I've never used it, but I think it'll be perfect. It's, I feel like it's like my kind of yarn. It's a kind I really, really like. <laughs> um, where it feels like wool, but it's not quite like I don't know. It's like too wooly. You know what I mean? I'm not against that. I think it's just not for me. But this is merino, but it's still like, like you know that it's like sheepy, you know? So that's hard to describe. I'm not great at fiber content, but I'm really happy with this yarn. Thank you to my knitting friend. Okay, the last thing was also a gift. Um, Pearl Soho sent out like a end of year slash new year gift and they sent me this pom-pom maker and these lovely scissors too i can only assume they're to make the pom-poms with but as soon as i got it i opened it and made pom-poms like right on the floor by the front door with my son made a bunch of blue pom-poms and it was really messy and there was blue yarn in the carpet for a while <laughs> But anyway, so basically you can, there's two different sizes um, and then you trim them to be this. So I had a pom-pom maker in the past that my sister gave me and in the sort of chaos of like my son's life starting, all those things, I have misplaced it. I think he played with it a lot and then I just never found it. And so I've been waiting to make pom-poms for his scarf recently and this came. So we made the pom-poms right there. We put them on his scarf and then he wore it outside. Um, for quite a while so these scissors are also like little so anyway that was so kind <laughs> and I'm super excited this is probably not something I buy myself because I'd say oh I could just do it I'll just make them or whatever and then I never make them and now I have a one to replace my other beloved pom-pom maker and I love it they turned out so good <laughs> like wow I'm gonna make pom-poms all the time now for everything and my son has a bunch that he's just playing with now and throwing around so I don't know what could be better than that. Um, a bunch of pom-poms. So thank you Pearl Soho for sending these. They are beautiful and I'm really excited to make more pom-poms. Like this tiny pom-pom, so small. Ollie wanted the tiniest pom-pom and the biggest pom-pom. So I tried to make him both. Okay, that is all I have today, friends. I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting.